If you enjoy the video or any other content on the channel, feel free to subscribe. It really helps the channel out and we've got board reactions coming soon. This video is an overview for a Firestorm Assault competitive list using these Salamanders. I want to take a crack at making some lists that would do well in a tournament or competitive style game and this is the first of them. The Salamanders characters help add some extra punch into the army, Valk and Histan more than Ajrax. But I do like the Ajrax combo I used. It gives us a tool some armies just do not have access to. I will go over the list and then how the detachment rule, enhancements, and strategies benefit each unit in the list. I will also add the general game plan for each unit as well. Now onto the list. It is a Firestorm Assault Force Detachment list. I've named this one the Fire Drakes. It's 1,995 points. Our Warlord is Vulcan Histan. For our characters, we have Adrax Agatone, a Captain in Gravis Armor, a Librarian, a Lieutenant with the Champion of Humanity Enhancement. No battle line in this list, but future lists will have some battle line. For our other data sheets, we have six Aggressors with the Flamestorm Gauntlets, six Blade Guard Veterans, the sergeant has a neo Volkite pistol, a unit of company heroes, a unit of six eradicators, two multi melters, and four melter rifles, a unit of ten infernus marines that will be joining the librarian, a infiltrator squad just for sitting on my home objective. Then we have a land raider and a land raider redeemer. For our allied units, we have the Calidus assassin. We'll quickly touch on the enhancement and the stratagems for this detachment, and then we'll go on to the unit breakdown. The enhancement that we are using is the Champion of Humanity. While the bear is leading a unit, models in that unit can ignore any or all modifiers to their characteristics or to any roll test made for them, excluding saving throw, of course. Having access to this enhancement for a unit to ignore modifiers is also included for me. Some enemy units are very hard to take out unless we have a way to ignore all the stacking buffs to the defense. I'm looking at you, Catan and the Deathwing Knights. This gives us at least one unit with the ability to deal with them. Next up is the stratagems. Our first one is armor of content for 1 CP. Your opponent's shooting phase or the fight phase. 1 Adeptus Astartes unit. To the end of the phase, each time attack targets unit worse than the armor and penetration of that attack by 1. Next up is burning vengeance. Your opponent's shooting phase. 1 Adeptus Astartes transport that was selected as a target. One unit embarked within that transport can disembark as if it was your movement phase and then can shoot as if it was your shooting phase, but can only target that enemy unit when doing so and can only do so if that enemy unit is an eligible target. Then we have Crucible of Battle in your shooting phase or the fight phase, and this will add plus one to the wound roll if you are within six inches and the closest eligible target. Immolation protocols for 2 CP, so this one is a little more expensive. In your shooting phase, you can select one unit with torrent weapons, and that unit will have devastating wounds on those torrent weapons. Onslaught of Fire, this one I just don't use all that much just because I have a lot of torrent weapons in the list, but when you disembark from a transport, you can spend 1 CP so your ranged attacks into the closest eligible target within 12 inches. You add one to the hit roll, and then if you destroy any of the models in that unit, they must take a battle shock test. This one just doesn't come up all that often. Rapid Embarkation, and this one is amazing. I really like this one for 1 CP. At the end of the fight phase, one Adeptus Astartes transport unit from your army that has no models embarked within it, and one infantry unit from your army that is wholly within 6 inches of that transport. Your infantry unit can embark within that transport. That one's pretty neat, but it does have restrictions. You cannot target an infantry unit that is within engagement range of one or more enemy units that cannot normally embark within that transport or disembark from a transport this turn. And that is the big one right there, disembark from a transport this turn. So you can't get out and then just get right back in. Now let's move on to the unit breakdown of all the units in the list. We'll start with our Warlord Vulcan Stand with the Company Heroes. This is a new unit combination for my Salamanders. I do think the change from Vulcan with the Inferno Squad to Company Heroes is better for both units. Thanks to those in the comments who mentioned it. Let's look through Vulcan's data sheet abilities quickly here. The first is Seeker of the Unfound. At the start of the battle, select one objective marker on the battlefield. While this model is within range of that objective marker, it has an objective control of 10, leadership of 5, and a 4th field no pain. So he becomes a tanky boy when he is on that objective. 
Then we have Forge Father, and this is a great ability. In your shooting phase, select one enemy unit within 24 inches and visible to this model until the end of that phase. Each time a friendly Adeptus Astartes model makes a range attack with a torrent or melt a weapon that targets that enemy unit, you can reroll the wound roll. And that is quite powerful with a whole army full of torrent and melt -a weapons. With the Seeker of the Unfound, we want to be standing on the selected objective as soon as possible and as long as possible. The Company Heroes unit is smaller, making it hard to get line of sight on, and when the enemy does, it is minus one to the wound roll. No invulnerable save, but four wounds each and a banner to add one OC per model in the unit. When we have this unit on the Seeker of the Unfound objective, we will have an OC of 18, a leadership of 5, and Balkan himself will have a 4 up feeling of pain, making it much harder to snipe him out of the unit and steal that objective back from us. The Company Heroes adds enough survivability for us to move Vulcan out to get line of sight on the targets when we want to use that Forge Faller ability on. Next up is my main man, Adrax. We'll look through his data sheet quickly here, and then we'll go over his unit. He hits pretty hard with the 5 attacks, hitting on 2's, strength 10, AP 2, damage 3. It's a little weird that his giant named Thunderhammer isn't devastating wounds, but what can you do? His 2 abilities is onto the anvil. While this model is leading a unit, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, you can re-roll the wound roll. This is the reason you take Adrax. His data sheet numbers are nice, but this ability gives us some melee threat that a lot of the Firestorm Assault Force stratagems lack. The next one is Lord of the Pyro class. While an enemy unit is within engagement range of this model, half the OC value of models in that enemy unit. It will come in handy once in a while for flipping objectives, but onto the anvil is the primary reason we are taking Adrax. It will only come into play when an enemy model has a higher OC than one. The Adrax Lieutenant and Blade Guard combo is my favorite combination for Adrax. Even more so when we add that Lieutenant, this unit does not have the same amount of attacks as a 10-man Assault Intercessor group. The 24 Mastercrafted Power Weapon attacks at damage 2 is more overall damage though. The Blade Guard have 3 runes and a 4-up Invulnerable save. It makes them much more able to take damage and give it right back. This unit can push a heavily contested objective, unlike the other two unit combinations if we used Assault Intercessors or Company Heroes with Ajax. When we combine Oath of Moment and then Crucible of Battle, this unit becomes a death ball to anything it touches, with the lieutenant giving them lethal hits, fall back in charge, and ignore modifiers. I do like to run this unit in a land raider so I can get that extra movement and protection while still being able to charge after the land raider has moved with the assault ramp ability. With a 3 up save and a 4 up invulnerable save, Armor of Content will have better use on a different unit. And let's talk about the Lieutenant just a little bit here. I try to attach this character to the same unit I have Adrax Agatone in. Combined, they become a very dangerous melee unit that is hard to interact with, especially when you have the Blade Guard attached as well. Combined, they become a very dangerous melee unit that is hard to interact with. For the abilities, we have Tactical Precision. While this model is leading a unit, weapons equipped by that model have the Lethal Hits ability. That one's pretty good for the Blade Guard since they are only Strength 5. We can get past some of the higher toughness units. Next ability is target priority. This model's unit is eligible to shoot and declare a charge in a turn in which it fell back. Fall back and charge for the unit the lieutenant is attached to all game long is amazing. This on the Adrax Blade Guard unit is very useful. This is amazing to have on our Adrax Death Ball unit with all the minus one damage, half damage, armor content, etc. going around. For 10 points, this is a great enhancement for the lieutenant to join to this Blade Guard Adrax unit. On to the Gravis Captain with the six aggressors. This is the main unit we will use to put the fear of the Imperium into our opponents. The aggressors have twin linked in shooting and melee, making them good in both phases. The Gravis Captain can give us a once per battle round free use of the Crucible Battle Stratagem in either the shooting or the fight phase. We could also reduce the cost of immolation protocols from 2 CP to 1 CP, or if we have 2 CP, use both. Combining these two stratagems will allow this unit to threaten all but the toughest enemy units. If it is the closest target we are shooting, we will also receive an extra AP1 to those flamer attacks. The close range eradication rule doing work by taking their flamestorm gauntlets from strength 4 to the very nice breakpoint of strength 5. This unit will add even more deadly overwatch threat to the list with all the torrent weapons we have access to. 
I do like to start this unit inside the Land Raider Redeemer. Since they have no invulnerable save, they need to be close to be able to do their damage. The opponent will target this unit right away if we try foot slogging it up the table. Put more fear into the enemy as they watch us drive this unit up the board. Another great target for Armor Content since this unit only has a 3 up save with no invulnerable save. One of my favorite looking models. It is what drew me towards playing Salamanders when I first start looking into Warhammer 40k. And the Gravis Captain has the rights of battle so they can use a stratagem once per battle round for a reduced cost of 1. Then he also has refused to yield so each time an attack is allocated to this model, half the damage characteristic of that attack. That one's not as important as the rights of battle and that's why we take this character. Next up is our 6 man unit of Eradicators. This is our main anti-tank unit, very deadly into monsters and vehicles. With Vulcan Hastan, we can give this unit reroll the wound roll against targets that are not monsters and vehicles, since the total obliteration ability gives the unit reroll hit, wound, and damage against monster or vehicle targets. The close range eradication detachment rule really benefits this unit, taking their strength 9 melta weapons up to strength 10, which is important since a lot of monsters and vehicles are tough as 10. With reroll the wound rolls on 4s instead of 5s now, the Eradicators will be more reliable into those Toughness 10 units. We can also use the Armor of Contempt to help their low survivability. The Crucible Battle for plus 1 to the Wound roll, we would have to be within 6 inches of the closest eligible target to use Crucible of Battle, but we would also now be in the Melta 2 range. So there are some ways to really buff the damage of this unit. This unit has a lot of synergy with the Land Raiders in the list using Rapid Embarkation and Burning Vengeance. We will discuss this more in the Redeemer section. Next, the Infiltrator Squad. These will be our home objective holder, the Omni Scrambler ability, giving this unit a no reserves within 12 inch ability. This is the perfect unit for stopping any charges from reserves into our home objective, giving us time to defend the home objective if able to. Not a unit we want to spend a lot of CP on, but Armed Content can be used to help keep this unit alive if the enemy does get some shots off into this unit. A bit more expensive than a battle line unit, nor does it do sticky objectives, but the 12 inch reserve deny is very powerful for keeping our backfield safe. This is a new unit combination for my competitive Salamanders list. I usually have Vulcan Hastan with 10 Infernus, but Vulcan with the Infernus was holding the Infernus squad back. Vulcan likes to pick an objective and hold it, the Infernus want to get into the enemy's face, but at T4 and the 3-up save, they just had a hard time getting to where they wanted to be without being shot to death. The Librarian does solve the toughness issue, giving the unit a 4 plus invulnerable save and a 4 plus feel no pain to psychic damage. With a lot of mortal wounds being psychic damage, this adds a lot of survivability to this unit. With the newfound survivability, we can advance this unit up the board to get line of sight onto light to medium toughness units. 10d6 torrent shots at strength 5 or strength 6 if you're within 12 inches for the detachment rule at AP 0, damage 1. Then cause a battle shock test for one enemy unit hit by the Inferno squad. Use Crucible Battle for 1 CP to give the unit plus 1 to wound. Depending on the target, this can be devastating. I prefer to save the Immolation Protocols for the Aggressor unit, but if we're shooting Vulcan Hastan's Forge for all the target, I may consider this since we will be re-rolling the Wound roll, giving the unit a better chance to get those 6s for devastating wounds. Starting this unit on the board will give it access to Rapid Embarkation for 1 CP in turn 1 if an empty transport is wholly within 6 inches. Advance, shoot, and then at the end of the phase, jump into a safe Land Raider for 1 CP. Now we'll talk about our Land Raiders. We'll start with the Redeemer, and this unit makes enemy infantry put on their brown pants. The sheer amount of carnage this unit can inflict in the Firestorm Assault Force is awesome. The close range eradication rule giving this Redeemer a much larger threat range with Assault. The plus one to strength does not matter as much as the regular Land Raider, but is still a nice bonus. We can also use Crucible of Battle to give the Redeemer plus one to the Wound Roll or Armor of Content to add more survivability. We can even pop smoke as well. With 14 capacity, I do like to put my six man aggressors with the Gravis Captain inside. We could use the Eradicators inside for some more stratagem support, but I do prefer the aggressors inside with the Eradicators in reserve. With the aggressors inside, we can park this unit in front of infantry and dare them to move. And if they move, they eat a Redeemer Overwatch 
or they shoot the Redeemer for us only to use Burning Vengeance to jump out with those aggressors and light them up with our Flamestorm Gauntlets. Clever use of Burning Vengeance and Rapid Embarkation plus the Detachment Rule will be the key to unlocking some scary plays throughout the game. And one of the plays we can do is right here is we can move the Land Raider within 12 inches of a target but no closer than 9 inches, drop the aggressors inside, then bring in the Eradicators from 9 inches away from the enemy target but still wholly within six inches of that Redeemer. Shoot with all three units, charge with the aggressors, and then at the end of the phase, use rapid embarkation to put the eradicators inside the Redeemer to keep them safe and give the enemy pause when shooting the Redeemer, who is now filled with eradicators who could shoot back with burning vengeance. The same style of play could be used with the normal land raider in the list as well, so there is some lot of things we can do with transports and the rapid embarkation stratagem. On to the normal land raider. I like to have one Land Raider and one Redeemer in this list, giving me some long-range anti-tank with the scary Overwatch anti-infantry threat from the Redeemer. With the Land Raider 12 capacity, I can fit both Adrax's 7-man unit and Vulcan's 5-man unit inside the Land Raider. This will give us the option to get Vulcan to his Seeker of the Unfound objective as soon as possible. The Detachment ability gives this Land Raider great movement to get line of sight, we have to be careful since we may want to charge out of the Land Raider, take our time when choosing when we want to advance or not advance. With a Smoke Stratagem for minus one to hit and Arm of Content, while an expensive 2 CP will make this thing even harder to kill. The Calidus Assassin. This is our best unit for scoring secondary points. Pariah Nexus has a lot of complete at the end of the opponent's next turn to complete objectives. The Lone Op model with the ability to redeploy every battle round is very helpful for this list. We can also use her to negate enemy stratagems or help drain CP by dropping her within 12 inches of a target, causing all stratagems used within 12 inches of the assassin to cost an extra CP. This can be very powerful when an enemy has one CP. We do have to be careful when placing her on the board though. She can be very important to our secondary scoring. We do not want to get her killed early on in the game. How we play this list will depend on what the opponent has in their list. Lots of tough vehicles or monsters with lots of shooting, we may want to use the assault ability the detachment rule gives us to play fast and cagey to win on points without much overall killing on our end. Lots of infantry or medium toughness units, we want to be very aggressive, get board control to threaten with our deadly overwatch, get Vulcan onto his seeker of the unfound objective, drive the redeemer into the middle of the board, then drive that Land Raider with Ajax straight into the enemy unit and turn two once you've dropped off Vulcan. Keep the pressure up while we score points. The Caldus Assassin will help with the secondary scoring as well as the Land Raiders when we have no real targets or units to transport anywhere with these Land Raiders. This is just a rough game plan. Things will change as the game unfolds. Try to keep the overall game plan to score points in mind. Killing everything on the board does not always equal a win. On to the final thoughts. I really like this list. It gives us a lot of movement with the Land Raiders and a lot of tough infantry units with the Gravis and the Infernus with the Librarian. Vulcan Hastan can help give the army reliable damage into one unit a turn with Flamer and Melta weapons. We have a way to deal with Deathwing Knights or Catan with the Ajax buffed to the max unit. The Ignore Modifier's ability making them perfect for hunting those problem units down. Chaff will die a horrible, flame-filled death. With all the torrent weapons we have access to, using chaff to slow down this list will not be a viable tactic for long. If we're facing a lot of tough stuff, we can play KG for points, lots of low toughness and infantry, we can push hard with the army-wide assault. Subscribe for more Warhammer content, and thanks for watching, thanks for stopping by.